Hello, my name is Andy. And I am the Village Idiot. And I'm armed with a car and a GoPro. And an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to North Lincolnshire. And today you find me in a place where two rivers meet, which probably explains why that house behind me is called Waters Meet. The two rivers in question are the River Trent and the River Ouse, two rivers we've seen countless times on the channel. And this is where they combine to form the River Humber. This is Orkborough. This North Lincolnshire episode is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find her link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Orkborough is one of the most northerly locations in North Lincolnshire, located near the northern end of the Lincoln Cliff, overlooking Trent Falls, the confluence of the River Trent and the River Ouse. The cliff is formed of Triassic mudstone which runs roughly north to south. There's a steep ridge to the west of the village which gives it a panoramic view of the two rivers. It's not all about the rivers. If, like me, you've never been here before, this is a place you will want to come after watching this video. It's absolutely amazing for a lot of other reasons. Part of Altborough is a conservation area. That would be the oldest part, which includes Julian's Bower, Countess Close and the hamlet of Walcott, all of which we'll see as we journey around. Lying within the historic county boundaries of Lincolnshire for centuries, Orkborough formed part of the Manly Wapentake in the North Division of Lindsay. It currently forms part of the Burton-upon-Stather and Winston Ward of North Lincolnshire Council. From 1894 until 1974, Orkborough lay within Glanford Brig Rural District. The village was once thought to be the location that the Romans called Aquis, but that name is now usually associated with the town of Buxton in Derbyshire, its full title being Aquis Arnimente. Altborough appears in the Doomsday Book as Alc Barge. Normally anywhere with the word borough in its name would mean a fort or a castle, but here that's not the case. The name Altborough seems to contain an old English personal name, Alca, and the word burg which means a hill, a mound or an artificial hill. It's generally accepted, therefore, that this is Alcas Hill. The earliest evidence of settlement in the area has been found near Kelwell in the form of a stone axe head, flint arrowheads and other finds, thought to date from the Neolithic period. Orkborough seems to have had some Roman activity in the past too, but nothing like its near neighbours at Witton or Winteringham. Roman finds, like pottery, have been made here. Much more prominent historically would be the former Orkborough Benedictine Priory Cell, founded before 1052 and recorded as being given by its founder, Thorold High Sheriff of Lincolnshire, to Spalding Priory. It was a small priory, being a cell of only three monks, a secular chaplain and a prior. In 1220 it ceased to exist as a monastic house and it was abandoned. Orkborough may have a connection to Thomas Beckett. In 1697, a stone was found in the ruined chancel of the church bearing three names, Richard Brito, Hugh Morville and William Tracy. These were three of the four knights who murdered him in Canterbury Cathedral in 1170. It suggested they took refuge in Orkborough and helped with the restoration of the church. Orkborough has two springs. We've already mentioned Kelwell, but there's also Low Wells. This discharges from a point just to the south side of Prospect Lane and was probably used for watering livestock. The village has some wartime history as well in the form of some defensive structures, including three searchlight batteries to defend the Humber estuary and a heavy anti-aircraft battery. In the landmark section, we'll see a place that once had more than its fair share of wartime involvement, and it's still a major landmark to this day for lots of other reasons. Demographically, Orkborough's land area, which covers the village and the hamlet of Walcott about one mile to the south, is about 12 square kilometres. That gives it a population density of 36.24. 
57.2% of Okra's population are of working age, 28.9% are age 65 and over, and the rest are children. Figures which would suggest a commuter village, but with plenty of farms around, that may not be the case. 98.3% of the residents here are white British, the remainder are Asians, and there's one from another ethnic group. That's pretty typical again for North Lincolnshire. The average house in Ockborough has a value of around £282,000 based on seven sales in the last 12 months. A semi-detached house generally sells for £202,000 and a detached for £476,000. There's not a lot in Aukborough amenities wise, regardless we begin today's episode with education. Aukborough Primary School was judged as outstanding in January 2012 and September 2018 by Ofsted. The only public house in the village is the Aukborough Coronation Club. This is a conservative club but non-members are welcome according to Wattpub. Here's the opening times on the wall outside if you're in the area and fancy dropping in. There are no shops in Opera unless you want to count the next property we're going to see. Other than that, we have some eggs for sale on a stall on West Holton Lane. Here is that property, which is an old farm workshop that's been transformed into an attractive tea rooms. This is the paddocks and it sells homemade cakes as well. This is also a campsite with glamping pods. I imagine being within walking distance of some of Opera's landmarks is something that attracts visitors to this one. Healthcare and the Manor House is a 17-bed residential unit providing community social care packages to adults with learning disabilities. There are also four semi-independent living bungalows. St John the Baptist Church next. Earliest records show a church here in 1052 and the tower is of typical Saxon design. There have been many changes to the building throughout its long history. Robert Thompson, there's a man we've met before, has one of his signature mice in this church. It can be seen on the right hand upright of the Reredos, placed as a memorial in the early 1920s. For some years, the church housed a pair of Grotran Steinweg grand pianos, belonging to the Goldston and Clemo piano duo, and was used for many of their recordings. What Aukborough lacks in terms of amenities, it more than makes up for with landmarks. There are no end of these, and we start with perhaps the most unusual one, Julian's Bower. This is a turf maze that overlooks Aukborough Flats. Although referred to as a maze, being unicursal, meaning it only has one way in and one path through, it's more accurately a labyrinth. According to a book by Arthur Mee, the maze was cut by the monks from the Priory, but White's Lincolnshire Directory of 1872 maintains it was constructed in Roman times as part of a game. In case the maze becomes overgrown or otherwise indistinct, its pattern is recorded on the floor of the church porch and one of its windows. It's also on a gravestone in Opera Cemetery. And speaking of Opera Flats, look at this view. What you're seeing here is where the Ooze and Trent combine to form the Humber, one of the most breathtaking views I've ever seen. Okay, this is uh, slightly downhill, this footpath, so I'm going to have to hold the tripod rather than just let it free. Um, okay, this is a very important view from this footpath. I'm on the Nev Cole Way. Uh, you can see Witten Island here quite clearly, it's there. That is Witten Island. That's the clearest view I've got of it up to now uh, from uh, all four of the parishes that uh, have parts of it. And also, you might be able just to spot here, like a little triangular point. That is where the Ooze and the Trent meet each other. And at that point is something called Apex Light. Let's talk a little bit about that. Apex Light is a lighthouse which is attached to the opposite bank of the River Trent and it's inaccessible from Opera. However, it is part of Opera Parish. Opera Flats is an otherwise alluvial plain jointly owned by the UK's Environment Agency and English Nature. It once had flood defences which were built in the 1950s to protect the area. These have now been breached to allow water to reclaim the land at high tide and in times of flooding and is managed to encourage biodiversity with reed beds, lagoons and grazing areas. That is quite a difficult footpath to walk on. It's up and down, it's uneven and it's very slippery as well in places. I don't recommend it, but what I do recommend if you do attempt it is the view. It's absolutely stunning. You can see everything. You can see the River Ouse, you can see the River Trent, where they meet, Witten Island, Apex Light. It's fabulous. It's well worth it. 
Opera Flats may be arable farmland these days, but it had a bombing range during the Second World War, which took the form of a chalk marker, with two observation posts. Both observation posts are accessible to the public via a public footpath. The location of the chalk target marker, though, is not known exactly. This next thing was my attempt to find Kel Well, a spring that discharges from a point just below the top of the cliff. Google Maps is wrong with this. It says it's here, but it's actually in Walcott. What you're looking at here is Countess Close, a rectangular earthwork lying just a few yards to the south of Julian's Bower. It measures approximately 80 metres by 90 metres internally. Countess Close is believed to be the earthwork remains of a medieval fortified manor house. It's thought it was named for a Saxon heiress called Countess Lucy of Leicester, Lincoln and Chester. Following Lucy's death, Countess Close passed to her son who then gave the land to Spalding Priory in 1147. Roman pottery shards from here have been found in the fields south of Countess Close as well. We've got two old chapels to look at next. The Methodist Church on Front Street was originally Wesleyan and has a date stone for 1840. It was a replacement for an earlier chapel of 1811 and 1812. The second is Okba Primitive Methodist Chapel, which initially dated from 1827. A second chapel dates from 1865. After closure in 1938, this became a storehouse. We've also got a tower mill here, built in around 1860 originally for the milling of cereals. It replaced a post mill, which was recorded as still standing in 1853. It remained in operation until 1916. We've seen the maze in the church porch, but there's also a much defaced cross shaft just outside it, seemingly from being used to sharpen agricultural implements. The church also has the war memorial for the village. This is a Celtic cross style war memorial just inside the churchyard. Finally, the cemetery, separate from the church on Walcott Road. There are two parts to this cemetery, referred to as the Open Cemetery and the Clothed Cemetery. Despite my best efforts, I couldn't find that gravestone with the maze on it. The Parish Council has sole responsibility for the upkeep, maintenance and management of both this cemetery and the closed graveyard at the church. Okay, I've just got one more thing to cover here in the parish of Altborough, but before I get to that, you guys need a picture bit, and here that comes right now. Just south of Opera, and to be fair, I could have walked this in truth, is Walcott. This, although tiny, has quite a lot of interesting things about it as well. The name Walcott is believed to mean the cottage, hut or shelter of the Welshman, suggesting that this might have once had an isolated group of Welshmen not uncommon in Anglo-Saxon times. It's noted for Walcott Hall, a Grade 2 listed Georgian country house which stands in 22 acres of parkland, built in the mid to late 18th century, commissioned by Alderman of Hull, Nicholas Denman. It was built for Thomas Goulton, modified in the early 1800s and partly demolished in 1964. Several families have occupied the building, including the Marriotts, Stricklands, Constables and Ledyards. Walcott Hall has some history with the Romans as well. A pot containing a small hoard of Roman coins was unearthed in the grounds of the hall, indicating a possible Romano-British settlement here. It's currently used to cater for weddings and corporate events. Across the road is Walcott Old Hall, which is just as impressive a building if I'm honest, and it's also Grade 2 listed. Aside from the two halls, there really isn't much more to Walcott other than Kell Well, which rises to the west of Walcott Hall. If you follow the road south from here, you're on the Burton upon Stather scenic route, something I did to leave Oakborough behind. Trust me, it's well worth doing. You get some great views over Trent Falls.
And there you have it, that's the parish of Orkborough here in North Lincolnshire. Very historic place with a lot of interesting landmarks. When was the last time we saw a maze on the channel? I'll tell you when, never, because that's the first one we've seen. Quite amazing. See what I did there? <laughs> If you'll excuse the pun, this has been the parish of Oakborough and I've been Andy, otherwise known as the Village Edition. I'll see you down the road somewhere else in North Lincolnshire next time. I'm out.